Hey guys, welcome back to Alone in the Dark. It's back and I have a green screen. Oh my god! Doesn't it look cool? <laughs> I like keep looking at myself and like, wow, I'm like here. There's no background anymore. Um, yeah, I, it was really, it was super, super easy. So I'm kind of ashamed that I didn't do it super uh, easy, uh, sooner. Super. Sooner, but here we are. Um, PS1 version for Alone in the Dark. I streamed the beginning of the game again, so if you want to see me play through the beginning again, go to Twitch, because it's still there. Um, and I did exactly what I did last time. I got a couple more items, though, because people in chat were like, oh, go back, you're missing an item. So, um, yeah, let's finally get started on that fucking 45-page file, huh? I remember where it is. I really hope this recording goes okay. Richard Morton back from an exploration in front of one of his ships. There are 49 pages. Okay. <clears throat> the history of the famous Boston dynasty is a tale full of unexplained events, surprises, and troubles. Some will claim my only goal in telling it is to damage the reputation of one of the most legendary fortunes of Massachusetts. I would... <laughs> that's actually a funny word because to me, Massachusetts. Because Japanese have a lot of... Japanese people have a lot of trouble saying that word. Massachusetts. Because in Japanese it's like Massachusetts. And I don't know, it's hard to them. So they they stumble uh, stumble over it and there's like, actually like a c comedy bit about it. But I derail. Um, I would like to say in my defense that I am simply doing my duty as a historian. My account is based on reliable sources and interviews with witnesses who, though they may be evasive, are no less worthy of our interest. If I echo certain rumors, it is in the belief that they too are con constit constitutive of the Morton family history. Rock oil. Contract for the Exploitation of Natural Resources in Puebla, Venezuela. Signed by a representative, representative of the Venezuelan... Okay. Morton family roots in America go back to the time of the great demographic changes during the decades following the founding of the USA. Although it is impossible to reconstruct the family history further back than the beginning of the 19th century, it appears that the family originated from the small town of Whitechapel in Sussex in England. It was Robert Morton, a linen merchant, who led his family to the American continent. 1823, he built his first paper factory on the heights of Beacon Hill. Nice. The success of Morton Papers was dazzling. It was Richard Morton, though, his older brother, who founded the real Morton Empire by creating the Morton Oil Company on March uh, 23, 1889, at the age of 37. That's really late uh, back in the day, back in the 19th century. People wouldn't really get that old, so... That's late in life. The Iceman. To me, at least. Uh, I think, like, people... It wasn't weird for people to die at, like, 60. The Morton family's history of secrecy started with the discovery of a man in the ice during one of his company's prospecting expeditions in Greenland between 1891 and 93. Richard Morton, the influential public figure, became increasingly reclusive, abandoning the powerful Boston society circles he frequented, to launch himself into daring expeditions that led him back time after time to the site of his first macabre discovery. What? That's awesome. Deserto is in the background. Oh yeah, that dude. To assist in his missions, which sometimes ended in human and financial disaster, he called upon Swedish and Norwegian sailors and mercenaries, among who was certain Judas de Certo. The Certo was a risk-taker, a warrior, and a clairvoyant, oh, interested in the arts of black magic. He was a suspicious character who seemed to have a great influence over Richard Morton. The exact cause of this terrible accident was, nev accident was never uncovered. A train crash? Against expectations, the family business was flourishing. The Morton Oil Company won over market after market in Venezuela, Indonesia, and in the North Sea. Its competitors, meanwhile, were stuck, struck by a string of surprising misfortunes. Oh. Their key negotiators had accidents, their directors developed mental health problems, and their lawyers would cave in suddenly, agreeing to disadvantageous disadvantageous settlements. No public or private investigation managed to pin a criminal charge on the Morton group. The family's fortune was known to be huge, however no one knew how huge. What? They're dirty. Black magic. Gibson, around 1900. 
Samuel Gibson entered into Richard Morton's service on June 20th, 1899. This brilliant student had a knack for deciphering ancient languages. It turned out that Morton had entrusted him with the translation of inscriptions on tablets found near the famous Iceman. Gibson's work led Richard Morton to Shadow Island. That's where we are right now, right? Offshore view. The fort that overlooks the island's break, bleak moors had break. That's that's so Japanese of me. Holy shit! I just totally read that R as an L, uh, L as an R. <laughs> Jeez. Had been abandoned for a good twenty or so years. Soldiers stationed there had experienced hallucinations or suffered sudden bouts of sheer madness. Bouts. Others simply disappeared without trace. I should also mention its strange legend that claims the chapel situated near the fort had been the site of strange rituals during the 17th century during which human sacrifices might have taken place. I am recording. Yes. Yes. The state of Massachusetts needed to convince need, needed no convincing when Richard Morton offered to buy Shadow Island, which he did for a nominal sum. It's so weird to be sitting here. It seems that, to start with, Richard Morton wanted to make the fort his home. He spent a real fortune and, fortune and superhuman effort on this task before abandoning the idea. He elected instead to build a strange manor on the south side of the island. His decision to buy Shadow Island and live there was because the engravings on the stone tablets were similar to those found in the island's deepest underground passageways. <gasps> I'm only halfway. Letter from Gibson to his fiancée. As work on translation of the engravings advanced, relations between Morton and Gibson deteriorated. The student relished the romanticism of his work, whereas Morton seemed devoured by destructive passion. What's more, Gibson's discoveries seemed to terrify him. He confided his worries and fears in a long letter addressed to his young fiancée, who had stayed on the mainland. This was the last they heard of him. Gibson's mother later received his this terse message. Your son's disappeared, his body's not been found. My condolences, Richard Morton. Search warrant. Unknown girl. Peak of Richard, Richard Morton's disturbing activity coincided with a wave of disappearances among the young girls of Boston's poorer neighborhoods. This is the most disturbing episode of his life. It is my definite belief that, driven by the evil De Certo, the founder of the Morton dynasty was practicing black magic rituals involving the sacrifice of innocent souls, without doubt the very chapel sac sacrifices had taken place three centuries earlier. To what end, I do not know. The first disappearances started in October, November 1903. They continue with the frightening regularity of what of one a month, increasing during periods of equinox, until Richard Morton died on April 13th, 1905. On this date, the disappearance mysteriously stopped. That's awesome. Archibald Morton. You name a kit Archibald? Come on, then you just know he's gonna be evil. 1874 he was born. Wait, so we go back in time. That's before the business was blooming, right? The only child of Richard Morton, Susan Chalmers. Chalmers? The youngest daughter of Lord Chalmers, a ruined aristocrat and op opium addict. While the Morton Oil Company's business prospered, Archibald devoted his youth to the study of the polar circles. Like his father, he mounted many expeditions. He also developed a fascination for Shadow Island and its strange secrets, so he follows in his footsteps. Um, dum, dum, dum. Articulation. Young Polynesian men and women in the hold of a ship. It has slowly emerged that large numbers young men and women were uprooted from their distant homelands and taken to the island from as, near, as early as the end of 1905. Archibald was, in this matter, more discreet than his father. Evident Evidence of this is found not only in the account of some sailors, but also in the written confessions of a slave trader, Thomas Plunkett, in which the Certo's name is cited several times. It seems, however, that no trace of these unfortunate men and women, poor unfortunate soul, has ever been found on this island. Archibald Morton and Jennifer Pritchett. So he grows up, takes over the family business, and marries. Married his first first wife, Jennifer Pritchett, a pastor's daughter and a renowned organist. She was a devout Christian and wrote long letters to her father recounting her disgust for her husband and her despair. The pastor, however, had disappeared the day after the marriage. <gasps> the undelivered letters were kept in the postal archives where I d discovered them still sealed. Oh, Archibald treated her with uncommon cruelty. He's yeah, with a name like that, you gotta be evil. She nevertheless gave birth to his son, 1899. That must have been rape. 
Jeremy Morton as a child. So Jeremy is the, ch the child of Archibald. I'm gonna forget all of this. A weak and delicate was of was of Jeremy. Jeremy was of weak and delicate nature, but early in life he already showed signs of exceptional intelligence. This is seriously like ten minutes of reading. He too was haunted by the secrets of Shadow Island, but his general approach was more scientific. Jeremy Morton was an inventor. Story time with Gab. The breadth and originality of his inventions, which he never even bothered to, to patent, is highly impressive. He attended congresses and addressed conferences. 1922, he struck up a lasting friendship with one of the last descendants of the uh, Afghanist tribe, Joseph Edenshaw. Native Americans settled on Shadow Island, 1924. Okay, invoice. It appears that Jeremy Morton collected a considerable arsenal of weaponry. In less than three years, he ordered over 200 pounds of explosive from the Noble Company in Boston, along with large quantities of phosphorus and magnesium. So... I need to, like, someone in the comments need, needs to explain this to me. So, Jeremy, Jeremy's father and grandfather were basically evil who used dark magic to, to get rid of any competition in the oil market, right? But then Jeremy, so the grandson, he probably was a good guy. And he and Edenshaw work together to battle the dark forces that are under the house, right? The last 10 years of Jeremy Morton's life were the most secretive and mysterious. In his youth and middle age, the inventor genius hobnobbed with the cream of society. He spent his old age, however, as a recluse on the island. Some accounts of this period make the blood run cold. One example is the marriage of his son, Howard. Okay, so another son. Born, as all sons, born in 1931 to Lucy Dogan, for which he staged a reception on the island. Relations and members from a distant branch of the family were present. The party was disrupted by drama when the horrifically mutilated body of one of the guests was discovered in the park adjacent to the manor. Lucy's brother, Michael Dogan, claims to have seen a terrifying lizard-like creature with tentacles armed with enormous fangs. Ooh, shit. Horribly mutated, but okay, it took a picture. There's no doubt in my mind that the members of the Morton family, Jeremy, being no exception, undertook dangerous and frightful experiments on the corpses discovered by Richard and his successors. Experiments that interfere with nature's own course, resurrections from the dead, crossbreeding, genetic man manipulation. Oh, here we go. Howard and Lucy. Wait, it goes down up. Okay. So it starts with Richard and Susan, then Archibald, the evil, evil one, then Jeremy, and then Jeremy is with... Jeremy was the one who worked with Eden Shaw, right? Okay, and then we have Howard. I made it to the last page. Okay. This is really complicated stuff. Okay, let's uh, check further down here. I must say, playing it on PS1 is definitely better. I really agree with you guys, because um, like, even if you grab your weapon here, you see how many bullets you have left in the gun? Your health status, bottom right. That was already... Uh, the health status was already a thing, but I really think it looks better this way. And uh, the music is ten times better. Don't have time to read. Dude, we just read 50 pages. We just spent... 12 minutes reading, so you can read another book if you want. Um, let me see what I had in my inventory again. Okay, there's nothing here. Oh! Push this book. Sure. The book is in position. The fuck does that do? Okay. No, I can't do anything with it. Okay. Then the other side has the stairs. I haven't been all the way up yet. I kind of want to go back to the main hall because I know how to do that statue thing now. You just have to push it in front of a mirror. And then on the back of the statue, so reflected in the mirror, you can see the code. Oh, this reset. I definitely saved here. Hmm. That's weird. Oh well. It did load me in here and it replayed the cutscene. Oh, go around the corner. What's this? Nothing? Okay. Oh, that scared me. 
I hope you guys like it with the... I mean, for this game it doesn't really matter because I wouldn't have been much in front of the game anyway, but... I do think the green screen adds a lot um, to it and... Um, oh, oh! Jesus! Whoa. Where'd he go? Is he dead? Dang! That was fucking creepy! Climb the ladder? No, I don't want to! Where the fuck does it go? Why are the lights off? Shit! Do I have to go back down? Fuck, do I have to go all the way back down to the light switch? I should, shouldn't I? It's a dead end. Fuck. Well, that's useless. Okay, um... Let's climb the ladder. We just saved anyway. I mean... Ah, oh, fuck. Why did I... Uh... I might actually not save at the end then of this episode. I only have time to record one episode tonight before I stream. I'm gonna stream probably as soon as this video is up. I'll be streaming as well. Um, outbreak? More Outbreak? That'll be on YouTube in like 12 hours. Holy fuck! Fucking on the side of the roof. I hope I can't fall off. That would be nice. Okay, nothing here. Um, ha! Ah, dog! Oh fuck, I should have used it. Oh. Oh god, I'm reloading. Jesus, that took three shotgun. I was like, oh no, I should have used the handgun, but... Wait, I just reloaded. Oh well, I'll reload again. Where's this go? Awesome! How the hell is there a dog up here? What the fuck? Whoa, where am I? Oh, this is charm. Yeah. Nothing else? Come on, give me bullets. Huh. What the fuck? Is the tower gonna break? I can see the fort in the distance, but with the naked eye I can barely see anything. Oh, you want like a telescope? I didn't pick up anything useful like that, did I? Flashlight. Crowbar. I need, like, a telescope. Okay. Good to know. We'll remember that. This seems like a hatch, but I guess for now we can't really do anything with that. I keep, like, watching that. If every time you see me look here instead of the camera, it's because I'm checking out how it looks. The green screen effect. Okay. Okay, nothing here. Let's go back for now. So. Ah! Jesus! Fuck! Dog! Dang! Where the fuck did they come from? <sighs> okay. Let's quickly go down, turn the lights on, and then we'll go back to the main hall. I want to do the statue thing. Um, I was really, like, not sure whether I should do a let's play or a stream of this, but I decided to do a let's play after all, because the views were pretty good. Oh, uh, no, I don't know what to do with that. Um, the views are really good, or really good, the views are pretty good, and all of them were properly monetized on YouTube. Um... So that gives me hope that I can play the rest as well, um, without losing too much money. Um, if you watch the stream, then you know uh, what the update is like right now. So YouTube shows us which videos they they deem unadvertiser friendly and that have limited ads. So that sucks. So I didn't really do anything upstairs, right? I only fought some creatures. So we totally don't need to save that. Oh, it's here? We're like super close to the main hall. What the fuck? In my mind, I like had to run through like five more corridors. <laughs> Definitely something here that I will need to kill.
There we go. Okay, now let's do this. Now I want to push you. I need to be able to push you. There. There we go. HM. Honald McDonald. <laughs> Why do I find that funny? <laughs> Honald? McDonald's. So it's something Morton, right? Howard Morton? Oh! Do I get another key? Ah! I think I tried HM before, but maybe the pedestal just had to be in the right location. Man, I'm so nervous to edit this. I really hope the recording's going well. It's only using a tiny bit of uh, CPU as well. So it's not hard at all. Oh yeah, I was, I was about to say. Um, I'm also getting a new microphone for my birthday. So next month. Yeah, one more month. Because uh, I'm getting a really good one. I'm getting the same, that, um, same one that John and Craven use. And exactly the same setup, so I already have like um I can show you. I already have like the mic stand here and everything. Um and I have an an equalizer over there. And um so I only need to buy some more cables in the mic. And there's also an amplifier coming from the States, so I had to import it. Um fuck there's another guy here. Ah! No, I fucking shot you. Why is there no recoil for you? Bam. Dead. Wait, what the fuck did I get from the statue? A key? Okay. Small rusty key. Examine. Third floor west. Okay, let me see. Am I danger? Third floor? Wait. Have I even gone a floor higher than this? Um, menu. I'm still at caution. I'll just risk it. Third floor, huh? I'm on the second right now. Wait, manor second floor, yeah. Are there stairs going up? Oh yeah, um, maybe. Maybe it's that tower thing. That like the attic takes you to the attic. Maybe that takes you to like the third floor. It was it did say west, didn't it? Let me see. West, yeah. Okay, let's try that. That's probably it. See if I remember how to get there. Oh, but yeah, I was also saying, um, wait, wait, let me finish the microphone first. Um, so it's a really expensive setup, but I've had some really nice people donating on Twitch. Um, they actually meant to give me like holiday money, money for the holiday, but I decided to keep it and invest in like a better setup. Um, so I bought like parts already, so that's for like this month's bills, and then the microphone itself. Uh, I'm gonna my f my friends and my family are all like putting in a little bit of money to pay for it, so it's super nice because the microphone is the most expensive part. It's like four hundred dollars or something, so I better sound good. Um, but then hopefully I'll also be will be rid of the issue that most people have that I sound really soft. It's just because I don't have an amplifier, I don't have an equalizer. <clears throat> this is just the best I can do right now. But yeah, once that mic gets here in like a month, um, I hopefully will have like the quality that I want. Uh, 
not that button. Let's see if the rusty key goes in here. Yeah! Unlocked it. Let's have a look! And then the other story- ooh, bu bullets! Wait, 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 I need to find light switch. Oh, fuck! Where's the light switch? Um, should we go? Fuck, I need to find the light switch. Oh, where does this go? Ah, I'm reloading. No, I was hoping they would die. Oh god, no. Oh god, I'm so fucked. Still cautioned though. Not a danger yet. I'll use one though, because I'll just redo this anyway. I'm not gonna save at the end. He does reload really fast. Okay, now let's find that fucking light switch. Where is it? Light switch, light switch. Where are you, light switch? Oh fuck, I took the door out. No! There's no light switch here? God damn it. Please don't respawn. Okay, let's be fast then. Two boxes, nice. Check everything. Come on, move! There's something there. Lighter, nice. Should I light some candles? But yeah, at that point, if I get the the mic and the, all the setup going, John and Craven will help me with like fine tuning it and everything. Um, I did the green screen myself. I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> Although it was super easy, it was just another webcam filter that filters out the green, and then you kind of have to tweak it a little bit, and that's it. Um, but yeah, then I should have like the high quality setup that I that I wanted. I hope you guys like- I hope you guys like the green screen as well. Um, it'll be really nice for me not to be- like some games, like Dark Souls is a good example. Um, Dark Souls has info, like a HUD, in every corner. So with my old setup, my old cam setup, I would be always blocking something. Or I would be blo blocking like subtitles or something, and now that should not be the case anymore. So that makes me really happy. Where the fuck am I going? Why is there- Why does this place not have light switches? Do you have a lamp? I see a lamp right here. Where the fuck is the switch? I want it. Why is it so dark in here? I need a light switch, please. Oh, the floor is different there. Should I do something there? Is that like the attic bit? Where someone knows like the floor is different? Give me a light switch, please! This makes me so nervous. It's really funny because I just played that game Noise where you were safe in the dark. So it's the complete opposite. Okay, where am I? Let me check a map. Wow, this is confusing. So many doors. Okay, I'll just go back at the beginning and try the first one. I don't see any light switches. Or I'm blind. Um, then there's this floor bit here. I don't know what to do. It's definitely something going on here, but I don't know how to activate it. Maybe I need to press the button? Sealed up. Okay, that was door number one. Good. Good. I like sealed up doors. Then? And then door number three. Door number two. Sealed up. Okay. Now door number three. I can count. I can count to three. Hey. Okay. Fighter. Do we have to fight? It sounds like I have to fight. It sounds like I'm gonna die. Spiders. Fuck. Many spiders. Should I run? Oh no, so many! 
Oh, it's only four. Are they coming here? Because I can't see otherwise. Where are they? Yay! Wait, they were here, weren't they? Oh, they're on the... Something's dripping on the ceiling. Can I walk around that? Don't want to be under that. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Scared the living crap out of me! Fuck! What is it? A candle. Light it! Light it, dude! I have a lighter. There's a draft coming from this partition. What am I doing then? So what? Wait. I lit it, but... Should I maybe walk around it? Can I? I don't think I can. No, there's nothing here. There's a draft coming from this partition. So- <gasps> The crowbar! Let's see. Make sure not to walk under the spiders or whatever it is. I know. Um... <gasps> Hell yeah! Oh shit! That's awesome. Oh, I'm at 32 minutes? Holy fuck. Uh, is this where the spiders went? Empty barrels. Oh god. Oh god. That's heavy. That's heavy duty stuff. Bring out the shotgun. What? How'd you not die from three shots? God damn it. Die, please. Hey, honey. Did you finish watching? <laughs> be careful of the power cable. Oh, you just want it to be in screen? Kill them. I'm almost done. I just want to explore this room and then... Spoiled goods. The music is so much better in this version. God, there's so much to explore. Door seems sealed up. <gasps> Health kit! And something else. Oh, it doesn't matter. Wait, have I been here before? Feels like I've gone into a circle. Oh man, this is all so cool. Can I light this candle? No. At least the lights are on here. That's nice. What's that growling? It's probably just the music, I hope. Okay, I'm cutting it here. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys are glad it's back. And next episode we will go either talk or shoot whatever's in the bed. See you guys then. Bye!